Well, I'm in Leicester with the Amplified Leicester project, talking to Rav and Sue and uh, Ash. And uh, I'm really excited by what I've heard about, about uh, the project so, so far. Can you uh, give us a recap, Sue? Well, Amplified Leicester was inspired by work from the Institute for the Future in Palo Alto, California, and they identified 10 qualities or skills that uh, are needed in today's workplace. And they said that, you know, together these skills would make up an amplified individual. So we thought it would be interesting to take these skills and get together a group of people and try and develop those skills in them. But there's an extra twist because Leicester is a very diverse city and we thought it would be interesting to add diversity and difference to the mix. So we ended up with a group of people, around right about 25, um, who were all very different from each other with different backgrounds, who all use social media in one way or another and who are interested in becoming amplified individuals. And so what are the different projects that people have been working on. Who, who's organising, who's coordinating there? Is that Ralph? Or? Yeah, that's me. I'm, I'm the project coordinator. <clears throat> and every fortnight we've been holding um, workshops um, where we've had a guest speaker come along. Duncan Wilson came. Um, we had a local um, Keith Perch from the Leicester Mercury have come just to speak, you know, talk about how to write for social media. Basically, we have lots of different speakers come and the workshops consisted of them just giving us a brief talk and then a few exercises and um, getting the, the participants to Twitter, Facebook, um, and just kind of opening up their horizons really to see what's going on around social media and how they can use it to network and increase their networks and just increase their social media skills really. And what's that led to people doing for themselves lots and lots i mean we've ha some of our participants have found work in different areas that th they wouldn't have normally looked at um just through networking and you know facebooking and just you know increasing their networks and in increasing their skills just um they've, they've come back with a lot of positive feedback and um, what i've been hearing was that people are using lots of different methods and tools for that which suit their preferences you know so some people um you know a Good at, good at email discussion lists, some won't touch them, some doing... Yeah, you know. it's, it's very much, we've found a very personal choice. Um, some of them don't mind maintaining lots of different accounts, Facebook, Twitter, Google Groups, but some of them, you know, have honed in just to one and rather just use Twitter because it's just, it's easier for them and, they, you know, it, it serves a purpose for them. So we found um, it's very much a personal choice of what social media they tend to use on how many different services they, they're open to. And Ash, you're doing the technical support, which must be a bit of a nightmare with all of these uh, different technical activities. It's been interesting because some of the participants were already very kind of, um, I don't know, amplified, but they were very technically switched on and using lots of social media before they um, started the project. And then other people in the group are very much just taking their first steps in using social media. So that's, that's you know, been an interesting kind of uh, dimension to the group. So yeah, I've been trying to provide some technical support over the kind of duration of the project and help people who are just getting into something new to get into it if they if they have any problems. But we have experienced this thing where people have their preferred kind of channel, if you like. Um, probably some of that is due to the fact that they're not all kind of media professionals or designers or developers. Uh, the participants are you know are a very diverse group. Um, so. Like I say, some of them, it's just this, it's their first forays into using social media so intensively. Um, and yes, yeah, some of them do have their preferences, but uh, from a technical standpoint, it's been, it's been interesting. Uh, and some people have been very kind of, you know, um, forward in asking for help and they really want to get switched on and yet others are a bit more reticent. So we've kind of had to try and encourage them to, to get involved in the technology a bit more. Um, so I think that um, your work on transliteracy, um, underpins quite a lot of this activity. Can you give us a, a, a brief explanation of transliteracy? Well, transliteracy has been developed um, by me and colleagues at the Institute for Creative Technologies in Leicester at De Montfort University. And it comes from the notion that the what we normally consider to be literacy, i.e. reading and writing, is still obviously very useful, but really um, not enough anymore. We have to have a broader range of literacies, and we have to understand how they interact with each other. 
So we have a working definition of transliteracy, which is being able to read, write and interact across many different kinds of media. So the interactivity part is very important in today's media world, but also in an interpersonal sense as well, a face-to-face -to -face interaction too. Um, so in terms of developing transliteracy in the project participants, we've been trying to make them aware that we're looking at an ecology of different kinds of literacies that are often um, uh, will often kind of interact with each other, are interchangeable. Um, and I think that to a large extent that has worked. I think the group has become very transliterate in the way that they interact with each other and the outside world. So people are learning, um, on the face of it, new technical skills, but uh, behind that new literacy skills. And we were talking earlier about new sorts of social behaviours mm. uh, as as well. Are you finding that emerging? Um, certainly in terms of new sorts of social behaviours we have participants who are interacting with each other on a professional level or on a personal level coming to terms with the fact that sometimes those things are interwoven. We've had a lot of discussions about Facebook and you know whether or not you want to share your profile and who you want to share it with and the recent advances in Facebook tools have made this even more complicated um, but there's been a lot of discussion about you know well who am I and who am I in relation to the different people I interact with every day I think one of the one of the interesting things has been that we haven't run any technical workshops we've you know I've just provided support for the group as the, as the course has gone on but we didn't lay on a uh, you know, a workshop on how to use Twitter or Facebook or anything else, or you know, or Google Groups. We've we've said, look, these are the tools we're using, and we've encouraged them to use them themselves. And they've, a lot of the time, they've helped each other out. And in terms of their kind of social behaviour, some of them, I think, have changed their social behaviour using the group dynamic, if you like, to get started. And I guess we'll see whether they continue to, you know, exhibit that change in behaviour, you know, with their wider networks to see what happens and see what their feedback is on that. And I'm here partly to find out about the project but also to uh, look at how we can um, together run a workshop on March the 12th um, with the ideas that that might begin a process of sharing what you've been doing with other places because I think one of the purposes here is, is not just the uh, amplified individual but the amplified town. Um, so uh, are you interested in hearing from people in other places who would like to find out what you're doing? Most definitely. One of the things that we're hoping to do is to create some kind of simple model that other people can use, um, but also expand this within the city. There's been a lot of curiosity in Leicester from people wanting to know what we're up to. Um, and on April the 15th we're going to hold a day where we will open up and showcase the projects we've been doing and at the same time we want to expand because this project's funding ends at the end of April but Amplified Leicester is really just getting going so we'll be interested in expanding here connecting with other towns and cities or villages that want to be amplified and perhaps creating a, an amplified network so yes we'd like to hear from people Terrific